from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of IBM Think 2021. Brought to you by IBM. Hi, welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage of IBM Think 2021 virtual. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Got a great guest, Rick Smith, CTO of IBM Anthem client team. Rick, great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, thank you, John. Nice to see you as well, virtually. So first, introduce yourself, what you do there, what's going on on your plate these days. Obviously, you have COVID, uh, we're coming out of it soon. Um, take a minute to introduce yourself. Yeah, so um, I've got about 15 years in the seat with Anthem. Uh, was previous to that, I worked at Purdue University as the CTO in uh, Indiana, so haven't really left, but started working with Anthem as a technical architect, eventually moved into the CTO role and have been part of a, you know, a long journey with them that started in a managed services agreement in 2005. And here we are in 2021. So uh, been through a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of changes they've made to improve themselves and move into digitization. And certainly uh, the changes we've made too, to accommodate that as we went through the, through the years. Awesome, well, thanks for that setup. I really want to dig into this uh expansion of Project Cirrus. You guys have had a multi-decade sure. partnership with IBM. And then, you know, last year you launched this expansion, Project Cirrus. Can you describe this project and, and what does it mean? And um, this new term I've heard, enterprise hybrid cloud as a service. Uh, sounds yeah, very so interesting. Yeah, that's, so that's my term. I'm hoping maybe to patent it or something like that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the reality is you hear our CEO talk and say that 75% of corporate workloads are not in the cloud yet, right? And Anthem is no different, right? So they're starting to go into cloud and those kind of things. But they said to us, you know, hey, we've got a long series of, of excellence with you from a delivery perspective, reliability perspective, it's kind of the bedrock of what we do, but we don't want to be in the data center business, right? And we want to transform and move to cloud. We want to become a more of an AI company, these kind of things. And we said, well, we think we can actually put together a program, excuse me, program for you to allow you to do that, right? And so we formed uh, something called Project Series, which is really an expansion of our partnership. So if I look back, John, we did about 80% of the end-to-end -end delivery for Anthem from a managed services perspective, you know? In other words, they did a few pieces. And we said, you know, we think we could improve that if we had the entire 100%. And so Project Series was about, you know, extending from 80% to 100%. It was also about taking a series of applications that were important to them and actually say, we'll actually take them on and transform them 100% of the way to cloud and take advantage of new things. It was about a commitment to closing those data centers, right? So they had five strategic data centers and about 24,000 hosts that we said we will actually commit to getting those, you know, getting you out of the data centers and moving those to either IBM Cloud or close to IBM Cloud, if you will. And I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, and we'll also build something called ATEC, Anthem Technology Excellence Center, if you will. And um, that's near and dear to my heart because that's sort of my baby, right? So it's a transformation engine and we can talk a little bit more about that in a second. But, you know, they said the key to this for us is that if we look at our trend line, John, over the number of years with Anthem, when we started in about 2007, looking at this data, you know, they had, we've grown the number of hosts we've had to manage over 600% during that, uh, you know, time period. But we've driven down high priority incidents by over 90%. So think about that, you know, this is really important for them to have resiliency and stability in their organization. You know, huge acceleration in the number of hosts, but drive down the uh, P0 incidents, if you would. And they said, we need to maintain that and continue to improve upon that, right? Yeah. Um, so Cirrus was a commitment to take that further, right? Start driving AN, AI into the operations, if you will, um, and everything that we do. So Anthem is transforming to do AI and machine learning for their members. We're committed to transforming and doing the same kind of thing on their operational side, if you will. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think one of the things that's interesting that jumps out at me just as you're talking, first of all, super exciting that project you got up there, a lot going on to unpack, but let's, let's do that. I mean, it, what I hear you saying, which is getting me kind of all triggered in a good way is you got transformation going on and innovation at the same time. You're innovating with this new enterprise hybrid cloud as a service concept. You're taking more efficiency. You're doing the classic transformational things, you know, making things more efficient, all that good stuff, more agility, 
but it's actually innovative. So this idea of an enterprise hybrid cloud as a service is pretty innovative because now you're talking about things with AI and scale that come into play, right? So you got the setup, you got it moving into being innovative, but scale's right there. What is this enterprise hybrid cloud as a service? Because is it just agility? Is it the AI piece? Where do you see that going? Yeah, that's a great question, right? And you're a great setup, man, John. So, <laughs> um, so again, Anthem's not ready to move all of their workload to cloud, right? And we recognize they want to be out of the data center business. So how can we take non-traditional workloads, right? Get them close to cloud, right? Get them very close to cloud, get us out of the managing the data center and actually allow us to move seamlessly from non-traditional workloads into cloud. And so what we did was something we think is very innovative. This is the enterprise hybrid cloud piece for me, right? Because normally hybrid cloud says, you have a client data center location and you have cloud and you marry the two together. Yeah. We said, you're not going to have a data center location anymore. We're going to have our data centers, you know, IBM cloud, and we're actually going to put, you know, some dedicated space right next to cloud. And, and when I say next to cloud, I literally mean within a few feet. And we're going to bring these non-traditional workloads there. We're going to take the network operation brain and bring it there. And we're going to allow you then to basically be able to move seamlessly from that to directly into cloud and you know, improve operations at the same time. There's other side benefit to this too. The other you know, unintended sort of benefit is that like any organization, right? That you find stuff in the data center that hasn't been looked at for a long period of time, right? Application teams haven't looked at it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. We're literally touching every single host, right? So this gives us an opportunity to also work with app teams and find things that really can just be thrown away, right? And this is great because we're actually making them more efficient, you know, optimizing the cost structures as we go about it. Yeah, I mean, the operational model changes me. You mentioned just that whole point about, you know, kind of doing some discovery on apps. This becomes kind of sets the table for AI ops, which is, you know, just code word for day two operations or, you know, full cloud native environments, which, which now you're seeing cloud native include legacy apps because you can put containers into the mix and you can then create these integration points that are, you don't have to kind of get rid of the old to bring in the new. So, so the dimension of what's going on here is pretty interesting, right? When you start thinking about that, okay, I can modernize at the same time as connect to existing systems. This is a That's exactly right. And, and, we, and we put the things very close to one another. And if there's any concerns over data security, compliance or healthcare regulated industry, of course, you know, we can have the workloads located in the best location to ensure that security is in place, right? So, you know, that's what's beautiful about it, right? We can kind of hit every layer that's possible from having it just as secure as completely privatized to going directly over to public cloud or connecting the two together as we go along. Well, you're definitely a pioneer. I love that enterprise hybrid cloud as a service. I think that's something that's relevant. We're living in a hybrid world. I mean, the queue, we used to go to events, now it's virtual events, but when now the events come back, they're, they're hybrid events. Every company is experiencing this phenomenon of hybrid something, not just technology. The yeah. app's got to adapt. So, super cool. Um, you mentioned something that was your baby. I want to get back to you. And you said you want to talk about it. I, I want to just bring that up. This Anthem Technology Excellence Center. Um, is your right. baby ATEC, I think you said for short. Uh, yeah, we call it ATEC for short. And really, you know, John, we said that it's got to be more than just, you know, taking that other 20% that we don't run today. And, you know, we're doing some very innovative things, moving, you know, non-traditional workloads. Like I said, all that kind of stuff was very cool, right? But we need a transformation engine, right? And we need the ability to transform skills, you know, like upscale the people at Anthem, as well as IBM, right? That are on the account team, it's a big account. We want to think of new ways to work together. Right, traditional managed services is like what? You know, someone cuts a ticket and says, give me X, Y, or Z, right? That's the yeah. traditional model. And we said, that's not good enough. We need to collaborate better together. And we are willing to redefine how we form our teams to work with Anthem, right? So if we want to form, for example, a product ownership team that builds it, runs it, maintains it, and that team is Anthem plus IBM together, we're going to use ATEC as a vehicle to design that and drive it and make sure they have all the skills they need within that group to do that, right? right? That's new ways of working together. And it's also to drive things like site reliability engineering, right? Cloud service management operations, make sure that Anthem has the right training, make sure we work together on these kind of things. So it's really, you know, kind of an exciting thing. Yeah. Um, and it's intended to be a co-created model, right? So we actually work with the Anthem, we co-create uh, using IBM garage methodologies, and then the idea is to co-staff it, but it's a, 
tend to be a thin layer of world-class engineering. That's really the whole point of it. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about yeah. that um, as, you know, as we move forward here. While you're speaking our language, you know the cube. We love the co-creation. We do it with media. It's always fun to create content together and sometimes in real time, put it together like we're doing now. Um, and it, it creates a bond. I mean, I got to bring this up because this is becoming more and more obvious and now mainstream. The notion of co-creation, the notion of ecosystems and, and ecosystems really meaning network effect and integrating with other parties, right? Companies and right. or systems. Uh, if you look at the underlying business model as a systems management software model. Okay, so with that, these ecosystems, the network effect, if you build, if you build together, you stay together. I mean, this is a different mindset. It's a different dynamic. It's a different relationship that companies are now looking for in what used to be called suppliers. If you're, are you either, a, are you supplying something or are you building together, right? So That's this exactly seems right. to be the theme. Right. Can you exactly. expand on this new mind. trend? Right, it's in, in, in get away from the, the strict racy. This person does this, this person does that. Instead, you know, we build a team together that has all the skills necessary. And that team owns a product, you know, life cycle. They, they build it, run it, maintain it. And, um, you know, that's changing with the way we deliver services from IBM perspective significantly, right? Because that's not our traditional model, but that's what we're doing. So we're really out in the front, ed on the front edge, if you will, changing that model completely. And uh, it's, it's one of the most exciting things for me, you know, as far as going forward. You know, this whole idea of partnerships has always kind of been there, but now it gets modernized and, and uplifted, if you will, to a new level. And, and it really is about watching each other's backs too, when you have that kind mm -hmm. of, you know, cause you're, we're talking about like pushing the envelope on probably the biggest confluence of tech trends I've ever seen in my career. And I've seen many big waves, you know, from the, the different revolutions and inflection points. Now it's kind of all coming together, right? At scale too, it's happening very fast. I mean, the, the change over is happening in, years that would, which took decades before. So it's, right. it really is a team approach. Yeah, there, 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 there's no doubt about it. And I see it every day in the work we're doing in it, like for example, at ATEC, you know, where we're working with the data scientists at Anthem, we're thinking of new ways to build things they've never done before. We're hoping, you know, to enable their science, enable the things they want to do from a digitization standpoint. The same token, I'm taking a digit, you know, a data scientist and putting them on the operation side too, right? Yeah. So, you know, we're doing both these kind of things together, um, and and really, you know, I didn't say this before, but this whole thing is about driving automation, right? Driving down no human touch, self service yeah. automation. That is kind of the you know been the linchpin of this, and and I, I also want to say, John, that you know, doing this all during a pandemic. You know, we, we signed uh, our new agreement together with them at quarter, you know, at the end of March in 2020. And we went live in August 1st with all the changes, the extra 20% of, you know, extra 20% capacity, it took over 300 plus applications completely, you know, started ATEC from co-creation in a pandemic. And we both agreed as a company, I, I give great credit to our client and to the IP members involved that everyone set up front, you know, during March, the pandemic's not an excuse to get anything done. So, you know, we're going to go forward and, and make it happen. That's probably the thing I'm most proud about. That was just, it's crazy when you think how big the project was and to pull it off during a pandemic. You know, there's going to be uh, two sides of the street in this, when this pandemic's over, the ones who, you know, made it through and refactored and or innovated. Cause you know, it's not just about being, having a tailwind, it's about taking advantage of the situation and the ones who didn't do anything, whether they were in the cloud right. or not, that's not, to me, that's not the issue of you're in the cloud, you had an advantage, it's right? not, my right. opinion, but, um, but there's going to be right. two sides of the street. And I think the one thing that the pandemic has shown us, and I'd love to get your reaction as a, as a final comment here is that when you pull back from the pandemic, it looked, it showed all the scabs, it shows everything. And you can see what's obvious and, and right. it becomes a forcing function. You know, necessity is the mother of all invention as the expression goes. So you can see what's worth doubling down on and you can see the productivity gains and that becomes clear. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think um, there's good and bad with everything, right? Pros and cons, like you said. And, and you know, one of the cons I think is the, having to schedule all interactions is definitely a con. <laughs> right, because you know when you spend time not only with the client virtually but in person, you do get the advantage of having you know chalk talks and things like that. They're not scheduled, right? So that's definitely you know one of the con side. But one of the pro side is it did provide some focus, right? Kind of extreme focus and on on what's important um, and allowed us to um, you know I think build some bonds you know with uh, the Anthem leadership team and the application teams doing it virtually or cameras like this that. 
that maybe happen at a larger scale than they might have normally in the, you know, because the pandemic kind of allowed us to do that and made that happen. Great stuff, Rick, great insight. Great to have you on theCUBE as always. Great to, uh, to talk tech, talk business, talk about the transformation and the innovation and at cloud scale. Thanks for coming on. Rick Smith, CTO of the IBM Anthem client team. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. You're welcome, thanks John. Okay, CUBE coverage of IBM Think 2021. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching.